It's the tail end of March, and also 35 years since the introduction of the first modular Max. What better way to celebrate Marchintosh than to revive my Macintosh 2? Before I turn it on, let's take it apart. I haven't opened it before, so I have no idea if there is a hard disk or if there are one or two floppies. There is a single floppy and a big SCSI disk. I'm guessing it's 40 megabyte by the little red apple sticker with 40 in it. I'm removing the tray holding the discs to get a better view of the motherboard. There are two batteries inside. None of them has started to leak yet. Measuring the batteries, one battery reads a bit low at 2.9 volts and the other a healthy 3.9 volts. I'll replace them both later, but they may remain for now. So, how do you remove one of these? Just pull? Yep. The Macintosh 2 video card looks pretty neat and clean. It supports 640x480 with 16 colors, the same as standard VGA that was marketed also in 1987. By adding RAM in the empty sockets, 256 colors was supported. If I can find the correct memory, it will be a nice upgrade for later. Before I try to power up the mainboard, I will disconnect the power supply and test it separately. To start the power supply, 3 volts must be connected between ground and the white wire. I use two AA batteries in a holder with wires to turn it on. A good thing I didn't try to just power on. The voltage jumps around a lot. Popping the cover off. I look for obvious signs of magic smoke having been left out, but I can't see any. A quick check with the thermal camera shows no alarming temperatures under no load. Two NTCs get pretty hot a few seconds before cooling off, after keeping inrush current in check. After that, the hottest parts are the two resistors balancing the voltage across the caps in the input section. This cap looks like it has been sweating yellow goo, but that turns out to be some sort of glue or lacquer. Removing the motherboard is easy as undoing a couple of screws, 
fiddling around with the internal shield and... Out it comes. Inspecting the board, I found only one leaking cap. I remove the leaky cap with some hot air. Some capped on tape shields the crystal on the sound chip socket. I'll clean up, apply some vinegar to clean off the capacitor juice, then I'll get on buying some caps and be back in part 2. It cleaned up pretty well. No traces are damaged, despite corrosion under the solar mask. Hit the subscribe button to minimize the risk of missing any coming episodes. <laughs>